record. All right. Oops. There we go. Okay, so uh, good morning, morning to everyone. Thanks for joining us. We've just gone through the uh, pillars and uh, mission statement. Uh, I'll officially introduce uh, Mike. Mike is 51 years of age, a father of two, lives in Manchester, Connecticut, uh, with his partner, Terry, of 19 years. He works behind the scenes in the world of information technology to make sure things go ever so smoothly. Yes, have been there, done that. <laughs> and there's a bunch in the group who have. Uh, in 2014, Mike embarked on the weight loss journey, which he very appropriately refers to as a health journey, uh, where he lost 200 pounds in 11 months. Yes, you heard me correct. Two 200 pounds in 11 months, and we will get more into that in just a moment. He is a healthy living advocate. And I got to tell you, I love that title because that he is. He's extremely passionate and genuine in advocating for healthy living. He too encourages less focus on the weight and more on the journey of health, which is at the core of his seven keys, which we will delve into this morning. However, I got to tell you, his main claim to fame, I don't know if he knows this is coming, but it's got to be his appearance on The Price is Right, huh? <laughs> you know what? Hey, and I did ask Drew Carey about his weight loss. <laughs> <laughs> yes, all right, well, maybe we can get into that. But how many people can uh, share that? And uh, that's on YouTube uh, if you want to uh, take it in. Um, but uh, if you'd like to learn more about Mike and his adventures, uh, visit uh, his website, MikeInspiresMe.com. That's MikeInspiresMe.com. And I'd highly encourage you to take in Michael's podcast where he shares more about his journey. Uh, and Mike, it's my absolute pleasure to welcome you uh, to Moda Nation. Thank you for joining us today. Oh, what a pleasure. And guys, it, it's, it's nice to be able to have an opportunity to share some of these experiences because this has become sort of a, uh, a purpose for me now. It, it really not only helps me keep going, but knowing that I can help other people is just fantastic. So excited to be here. But you know, Tony, I want to say something. Well, all of you guys know that I got a surprise for Tony too. We, okay. we all know that Tony is quite the chef and I thought there was going to be food, Tony. <laughs> That's uh we do that. Well, actually we do that once, uh, once uh, on Saturday mornings and every, every uh, second uh, Thursday or so. Uh, but the, now, as you well know, there's two parts to, to this. Uh, I, I, I do see a note in the chat box and I'm going to get to, uh, uh, to that in a sec. Uh, there are two parts to this. There's the uh, diet and the behavior. And uh, we do uh, a tackle both here at Moda. And uh, I think we'll be focusing a, uh, a little more on the behavioral part. So what I'm going to do uh, just to avoid the background noise is uh, everyone is muted. Uh, we want to make sure, uh, Mike, you should be uh, able to unmute yourself. Uh, yes. Okay, there you are. Yeah, and that just uh, eliminates the, uh, the the background noise. So we're going to delve into your seven points in in sure. um, in just a moment. Um, but the first thing I'm going to ask you. So I actually I want to ask you if you're ready to deal with the Canadian crowd here. But uh, oh jeez. Uh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, yeah, it's uh, pretty right. brutal. I have to say. <laughs> yeah, you know it's a life of igloos and all that kind of stuff. Exactly. Um, but tell you what. So before we delve into the seven points, which which I absolutely love and adore, and I notice that there's a a fair amount of parallels. But I, I thought it'd be best to, um, if you could kind of take us back to, I guess, I don't know, it was 2013, 2014, give or take. Um, was there a catalyst um, uh, to, to embarking on this journey? Can you take us back to that to that era if you could? And, and, yeah. and how did this all start? Yeah, we're, we're really, I think the main motivation, my, my why, as you guys often hear, had been the death of my father due to his health issues. Uh, up until that point, I had not really been taking care of my own health. And my father in 2010 uh, had succumbed to cancer. And I got to tell you, just watching him wither away due to his own lifestyle issues, poor eating, smoking, uh, watching that happen and being with him the moment he died, I just, number one, I saw regret on his face. And number two, I said to myself, I got to learn something here from, from his health habits. And at that time, I'm not sure exactly what I weighed. I probably close to 450 pounds. And I just, up until the, that point, never really cared about my health. So it's, uh, so if I understand correctly, that was around 2010. Right. Yeah. So is it fair to say, so officially, if I understand the journey took place kind of 2014. Uh, so there was a, some contemplation. Sure. I don't know if that's the word. Yeah. So, I mean, and that's a great question because 
I think I had made a decision at that point, but I didn't really know what to do. Um, and I'm sure a lot of folks here can can relate. You know, when when you're that out of shape, mm-hmm. and when you're when your health is that far, you know, the pendulum is way over here. I mean, there's so much confusion. There's so much conflicting information. I have a lot of, I hate to say trust issues when it comes to the medical community. I'm sure you guys can relate to that too. The medical community and with um, what sort of direction they were going to be able to give me. So I did a lot of exploration and tried a few things. I think during that time period, I can't remember exactly. I, I did try going on a diet and I think I tried weight loss patches I had joined um, down here. You guys might have a similar thing. We had a, a, a group called Tops Take Off Pound Sensibly. I, I joined that and, you know, didn't work out for me. This group took their Christmas uh, uh, celebration at, to, a, to a buffet. So if it tells you <laughs> where they were going. Um, I looked at gastric banding mm-hmm. and I sat through a session of that and ultimately decided uh, that wasn't for me. And we won't get into high details about mm-hmm. that. I've got a lot of opinions on surgery. Um, and it took me till about, and I, I was, I, I had some other health issues and around 2014, um, my doctor kind of gave me the okay to go ahead and start exercising and, and, and doing something. And that's really when I started, uh, is, is around them, you know, mid 2014 around, I think it was May or June. And, uh, but it was like you said, it was exploration up till that point. It's, you know, when, when you do it on your own without a group, it, it, it's, it, it, and we'll, we'll get into that with the, yeah. the my, my pillars. Um, it, it, it can be confusing and, and, and uh, daunting, but at the same time, it's helped me build what I have today. And, and, and kudos to you. I mean, um, you know, that's something that's brought up, uh, you know, doing it on your own or getting some help and, and sometimes uh, either uh, can be beneficial to, depending on the environment. Um so we're going to get, like, you put together uh, seven keys um, that were key to, to your transformation, and we're going to delve into them. Now, uh, uh, you get into, like, any one of these, we can we can devote an hour and then some to each one. In fact, right. you you, uh, you do a fabulous podcast where you actually get into, uh, where you get into each one of them. Uh, so we're just kind of going to go through the uh, high-level overview. But in your preamble for, for, the, uh, for the seven keys, just made a couple of notes here, uh, r- right towards the end, I mean, you know, some of this is, is, is kind of common sense, but, um, it, you know, we sometimes o- overthink this. So uh, let's look at your seven points. So the first one um, you talk about is the one that sometimes can be a little controversial and it goes into uh, what we're just talking about. But uh, for you, it was, it was about making your plan public. So can you tell us a little bit more about, you know, yeah, let's, let's what jump right that? in. Ooh, yes. Yeah, yeah, we've had discussions. And it's interesting, too. I had a conversation about that same one with a, with a, a doctor friend of mine who's into obesity medicine. And um, I, I looking back, make it public was really about two key things for me. It was about uh, ensuring I had accountability mm-hmm. and support. And when I, when, I, when I peel the layers back, and now when I've talked to people, it's less about, hey, tell the whole world. And it's more about, you know, if you're going to embark on this journey, especially since considering, as I said, I, I embarked on it alone initially. Mm-hmm. Um, having the support of others is tremendously helpful because, I mean, one of the things I said to myself, if I'm going to do this, I don't want to allow myself any wiggle room to get out of it. Because mm-hmm. you think about that, right? Um, often we, we, if we keep it private to ourselves and nobody else knows what's going on, well, if you just decide to give up, there's really nobody there to watch you. There's no, um, there, there's no accountability. And if you've got somebody, even if it's just one person or your doctor or your friend or your spouse, you, you need that, that support. You need somebody to kind of check in on you to see how you're doing, or those times you're going to be challenged, you know, and you want to give up. Yeah. You know, as you mentioned the, the wiggle room, there's a, um, you know, we have several mantras and slogans that we incorporate in our workshop. And one that we uh, delve into every once in a while is something called burn the boats. Um, it's a Spanish, um, it goes way back, but the whole concept is it's it's a battle, and they they right. they burn the boats, so there, there's no way of going back. They they need to fight. It forces them to fight 
fight the battle. Um, now, when you say public, maybe just to, yeah, is it like are we talking social media? Those around you, maybe right. something in between. Yeah, and again, you know, we're getting back to more. You know, as and it's funny as I'm writing the ebook that's companion to to these. Um, I'm not going to use that term anymore. But um, for me personally, and that's why we're talking about my seven keys to to what has been my success. Okay. When I took it to social media, initially, you know, I hadn't said anything to anybody and I posted some pictures of myself one day and somebody had seen um, one of them and said to me, holy, and we're all adults here. Holy <laughs> shit. Did you just say you lost a hundred pounds? And I was, you know, at that point. Mm -hmm. And I remember seeing that and it, it, it didn't even dawn at me at first, just how big that was. And then I realized, you know, and then people started coming to me and wanted to know what was going on. What were you doing? And I found it very motivating. Mm -hmm. It really helped me kind of feel like, wow, not only helping myself, but I'm getting other people excited about their health, wanting to know what, you know, what diet are you on? You know, all those questions that you get. And so for me, it just, the more I went public with it, mm -hmm. um, the more it kept me in the momentum. I mean, yep. now that I call myself healthy living advocate, I got to live up to what I say. I mm -hmm. got to walk the walk that I talk. Okay. And so that's what making a public has been for me. But boiling it down, Tony, mm -hmm. and as you and I've talked, that's probably not the best choice for a lot of people, especially since, as we know, most people who are struggling with, are struggling with emotional issues at the root and going public may be mm -hmm. difficult to do. So then I go back to say, well, really, let's just focus on making sure you've got somebody to help you feel support yeah. and accountability. Agreed. Yeah. And that's one of the things about in terms of is, is um, with the public. I mean, for some, um, the, the, the bigger the crowd, uh, the better. Uh, I, I think it's about finding a medium uh, that works for them. Uh, I, I personally found those immediately close to me uh, in my day-to-day -day dealings, uh, the person that was in my life at the time, uh, right. my immediate family, and even some of my uh, co-workers um, um, that were around. Uh, um, and actually, uh, uh, many were, were extremely supportive. Uh, just one, uh, uh, we'll move on to the next point there, but you, you, you resonated with me as, as, as understanding or wrapping our heads around that 100 pounds. Uh, one of the things that we do here, and we just celebrated last week, uh, one of our members lost 100 pounds. Um, that, that's four cases of water, right? So every case of water is, uh, is, is just shy, I think, of 25 pounds. Um, and, 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 you know, and that, at that point, you'd lost 100 pounds. So you were carrying literally uh, uh, day and night uh, four cases of water. So it, it certainly puts it in perspective. Um, let's move on to, to, uh, to your second point. And I have to say, I, I took in uh, all your podcasts and I, I thoroughly enjoyed uh, this one. Well, you were the guy, huh? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was me. Uh, but you, you did a fabulous job. And in this this one, I, I know, and that's one of the things, you know, we're, we're in our, um, we're a group of like-minded individuals. And as I, I, you know, um, when you and I, when I first started following you, there were several points that, that where I could relate to you, but there's a couple things you share in this podcast and I, I'm sure you're going to get into them. Uh, if you're not, I'll, I'll remind you, but I enjoyed this okay. podcast where you go, I, I had to reinvent my step, I had to reinvent myself and, and stop identifying uh, with obesity. So I think that needs a little bit more of an explanation, if you could, um, sure. you know, to the labels and what have you. Right. Yeah. I mean, so you and I talked at one point, I had been called by many of my friends, Big Mike. Mm -hmm. And eventually, um, it's almost like a self-fulfilling prophecy. The more I envisioned myself as Big Mike, you act in ways that become Big Mike. And I realize, now bear, bear in mind too, my, my, my undergrad is in psych. So I think a lot about these mm -hmm. things too, the semantics and how I talk to myself. And so I really had to be careful about some of the labels because here I am today. And I know the interesting thing is when I have folks who, are, who, who look at me today and maybe they are where I was before, I seem so far away from them, okay? But I think what happens is, is when you get that vision in your mind and you really try to think about, all right, if I'm going to really try to get to where, where I am today, mm -hmm. I got to think a little differently about myself. And those labels, those things we tell ourselves, how we identify are very important because I hate to say this, there is almost like a club, you know, when, when you were, when I was a bigger guy, there was sort of this big guy 
kind of club that I felt like I was in. I don't know if that's the best word to use, but it's the best I can describe it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, now um, I, I certainly, from all appearances, don't look like I fit in, right? But on the other hand, deep down inside, I still feel part of that club. You know, I still feel because I understand the struggles. I well remember everything, but I had to kind of change in order to, to, to physically change in my mind. Yeah, I hear you. And um, the, the, um, when you'd mentioned in the podcast and we were talking about, you know, the term big Mike, uh, big guy, I, I remember every time I had heard that um, it felt like the chalkboard. It just I, I was cringing. Yeah. I wanted to say something. But um, and that's something, you know, in terms of uh, the other part there, the, the labels and the self-esteem. Um, it, it is really so important that and, you know, we talk about the importance of self-care and, and self-love. And I got to admit, sometimes in a, in a group that's predominantly guys, uh, we, we try we don't like to go there but it's important that okay listen um we, we do have a road ahead of us and it's important that we start to um build up that self-esteem and the analogy i think of is i mean i remember in my early days of working you know you dress for the position uh, right. that, that 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 you want um uh, and, and also, you know, I mean, if you've ever done the driving instructions and, and you need to uh, avoid an accident uh, or swerve from a deer or what have you, you, you want to focus on, on where you want to go um, and, and not where you don't want to go. Now, right. your, your second point really uh, um, uh, blends into your third one quite well. Uh, and there is some overlap and it's worth talking about is um, the importance of self-motivation and uh, self-talk. Right. Well, and this becomes more important with, especially if you're doing it on your own, right? Because who else is going to coach you at that point? And we all know we have our days that we don't want to do something. Say you start getting into a regular exercise routine, right? I found that number one, even if I just show up, you know, I work out at home. So even if I just go down to my basement and go through the routine, it's better than if I just, than if I don't um, don't do it at all. I'm better off just showing up and just going through the motions because it's about building habits. Mm -hmm. And that's really what this self-motivation is for me is that I had to build new habits. I, I wasn't this hike with my physical guy before, and I had to motivate myself. And in some ways, as my wife calls it, I had to fake it to make it sometimes too, because it was against the grain of some of the things that I did before. I mean, certainly I wasn't walking or exercising or just eating healthy, you know, I just kind of, you know, did what I wanted. And now it was kind of like, all right, Mike, if you're going to do this, you got to pep yourself up. Now you certainly can help other people, but here's why I say the self-motivation is more, is, is, is important as well. Mm -hmm. If you've got somebody coaching you, that's great, but they may be gone at some point. And I say this about all different types of programs, any program that you're going to enter needs to be able to, team. we'll get into sustaining later, yeah. but needs to be able to teach you, like, I, I'm not doing success here for any of you guys, if you walk away from me, and you need me all the time. And so I had to learn the same yeah. thing with what I was doing is I had to learn to motivate myself. And that's kind of why it's a key for mm -hmm. me, because I really think in order to have that, and that's why we talk about later with the, the tie in, you got to be able to self motivate in order to sustain yeah, one of the one-liners actually, you, uh, you're, you're taking me back down memory lane. Um, I used to say to myself is that, you know, ultimately the magic is in the mirror. Um, uh, you know, it, the, the, the buck uh, land, lands with me. Um, a, a great point. Uh, okay. Yeah, and in your blog, I, I mean, uh, you know, you're a bit, uh, you're much more of the wordsmith uh, than, than I am, but you talk about, you know, moving away from the, you um, no, I want to lose weight too. I, I, I'm going to lose weight. Um, yeah. That's, you know, Tony, that's a good point. So we talk about, you know, again, it may seem like semantics. You can want to lose weight the rest of your life. Right. Mm -hmm. And never do it. Yep. And uh, actually the last book, I, um, I might've been two books ago. Um, uh, ben Hardy, um, uh, willpower is not the solution. It's right. You know, it's, and it's it, action. It actually, 
yeah, it's action. But then you mentioned yeah. it about building the habits and we're, you know, there's right. a, we're going to get more into kind of the nitty gritty uh, towards the, the latter couple of points um, and the, those habits uh, build in. Um, but right now we're kind of looking at, 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 a, at a mental piece. Uh, one housekeeping, I meant to mention it in the beginning. Uh, feel free to, uh, the chat box is there for brief commentary and uh, Q&A. My uh, plan is to get the Q&A at around uh, 9.15, uh, give or take. So if there's something that pops into your mind as uh, Michael is sharing, uh, you are more than welcome to use uh, the, the chat box. And I, I see a couple of, of uh, excellent points already. Uh, okay, so after number three comes number four. Uh, you used an interesting uh, analogy that I hadn't given too much thought to, uh, at least in the earlier start stages of the journey of a lottery or focusing the journey or, or, parallel or paralleling the journey with a lottery. But you want to talk about point number four, how you focused on the association with the, with the end goal, if you could? Yeah. Um, so, and it's kind of contrary to breaking it down into small pieces that, you know, one of the other points, but you know, people understand the point. It, it kind of goes to the self-motivation. If you look at weight loss as something like a big chore, like a, I don't know, something that you just don't want to do, you're going to be less motivated to do it. Mm -hmm. And I had to change that in my mind. I had to say to myself, okay, if I'm going to go through this, because I mean, let's face it, I, I mean, I lost half my body weight. If I'm going to go through this. I got to have a good mindset about it. And so for some reason, I got in my mind, all right, well, let's look at 200 pound Mike as I won $10 million. Mm -hmm. Why? Well, hey, who wouldn't want 10 million unless you already got $10 million? How about another $10 million? All right. But the point is, I had to put something in my mind that said, all right, well, what's going to drive me there? Now, I don't know that this is completely essential, but it is something that helped me because then I kind of started thinking about it's all right, I got those days like, oh my gosh, am I going to do this? Hey, Mike, remember that $10 million? I'm like, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's kind of like that fake it to make it kind of thing in some yeah. ways too. And in any other hand, it's kind of like, you know, it gives you that that drive and you you and i talked about a similar thing with that. yeah well i gotta admit the the uh, the um the lottery analogy is something that kind of crept in uh, more towards uh maintenance um oh, yeah. you know with the understanding that my uh, the science is there to back it up i mean that there's a, i don't know what the exact number is but it's a high percentage of people that win the lottery and uh, sadly uh go back and i i, I looked at the yeah. journey here and and i think we all know in terms of data and recidivism uh as it turns to, to weight loss depending on what data source you're using it can range anywhere from actually one tenth of a percent, I've seen some data showing ten percent. Uh, from what I've seen, uh, it's probably closer to around five-ish percent, and it depends on what you use as the markers. Uh, but yeah, I use the uh, the analogy of of the lottery. Um, okay, I, I, and I definitely want to get to Q and A, so we'll, we'll we'll get to through sure. these uh, points, and they're, they're all excellent. And I think it just really sets things up. So point number five. Uh, yeah, we've, I got to admit, we've devoted entire workshops over and over to this. Uh, and it's so important, the always improving, trying new things, uh, adapting. Do you want to tell us a little bit more about um, um, what, you know, what that means and maybe some specifics in your journey? Yeah, well, you're going to face roadblocks sometimes and uh, or setbacks. And so if you keep, what is it? If you always do what you always did, you're always going to get what you always got. So you got to try something different. You know, I had to kind of keep that mindset going along because if I was going to do this on my own. I had to kind of figure things out. And it's like you go to one door, it's locked. It's like, well, I could go in another door. I could try to go around it. I could kick it down, which is what I did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and then you just kind of you try to figure out, you know, how can I improve what I'm doing if it's not working? And then the other thing is trying new things. So food example. OK, mm -hmm. I mean, I eat a lot of vegetables now and we know, I mean, for for those of us that understand, you know, hearing what they talk about nutrition nowadays, mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, mostly plant based and, and whole foods are, are best for us, keeping away from the process to think, well, let's face it, I wasn't eating a lot of those things were, before. And so I had to kind of like take a look at, all right, how am I going to get myself to eat mm -hmm. these things? And I had to trick myself. And so Tony being a chef, you, you know, you, you talk, you and I talked about the sneaking vegetables into my chili or all these other things that kind of got me, you know, to do these things and just trying to improve today, Tony, I mean, let's just face it. I mean, I've been maintaining for six yeah. years now and I'm always having to kind of look at things because I, yeah. I 
give an example, you know, I've been having, I, I hike a lot and walk a lot. I have IT band syndrome now in my left leg. Mm -hmm. And so I had to find another way to, to, to deal with that. And so I've been using a, a band and I've been doing stretches. I had to change my whole health mm -hmm. routine, workout routine and adapt to be able to deal with this issue. Or I could mm -hmm. just let it, oh, well, I'm not going to hike anymore. Yeah. You know, no, find another way. Yeah, and one of the things uh, the the it, it's very cliche, and we hear it over and over again. Um, but it, it's a journey, not a destination. And um, you know, as I've got to know you, and quite frankly, I've made it my, my life mission to 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 talk to other people who've lost weight and sustaining, and maybe even uh, relapse um, and, and learn. And and again, as cliche as it is, and you talk about you get into to much more detail. Um, it, it is a journey and a destination because. You know, if, if we have this mindset that mindset and um, that we've arrived, you know, that's when complacency um, uh, kicks in. And, and as I'm listening to you now, uh, six, seven years of maintaining, um, you're still doing it from from what I understand. Exactly. Yeah. Um, OK. And uh, OK, we will. Uh, and, and as Tony said, there are these points could go on and, and certainly you can go back and hear more detail on, mm -hmm. on my podcast too, where I talk about them. But on the other hand, we don't want to breeze through, but we also want to allow because there are questions coming yeah. through. So. Yeah, absolutely. I, and um, uh, we'll do that. I just did. It, it's it, it's my handwriting here. Oh, okay, so we'll move into yeah. point number six. So uh, about sustainability, and I, I want to uh -huh. get into this one. Uh, uh, I have a few key things here because it, it's what it's all about. And again, looking at the data, it, it's it's not the weight loss where we're most struggle. It, I mean, the weight loss, it, it ain't easy. Um, but there, so uh, there's a, a different element of, of challenges with, with sustaining. So you, you talk about focused on a sustainability. There's one key term I really want to get into, but um, can you tell us more about that? And also what I'd like to hear is, you know, was that, was that your mindset from the very beginning? Yeah, it was. So very simply, I said, I'm not doing this again. I'm going to do it now and I'm not going back. So in order to not go back, you have to sustain, right? You have to be able to maintain all the health gains that you've got. Now, this is not going to say I'm not going to have health challenges. I still will through the years. I'm aging and do stupid things still. Um, but the sustainability really comes down to a core belief in my mind with everything that I do. Remember I talked about, you know, what are you going to do if, um, you know, your health coach goes away or what are you going to do? Everything I approach, and I'll give you a great example. Last year, when you guys are a lot up in Canada are still dealing with this too, with all this lockdown, all my friends, I can't go to the gym. Well, guess what? My gym's in the basement. Not not acting like I'm great better than anyone, but in my mind, what am I going to do if the gym goes away? And that may seem paranoid, but hey, guess what? The gym went away, didn't it? Mm -hmm. Well, the same thing. I changed nothing about my routine last year when COVID hit. I I still went out in the woods the whole time hiking because to my, in my mind, I did not want anything to stop me mm -hmm. from what I do. You know, the world can go to heck. And I'm still going to be able to go out in the woods and keep my health up because let's face it, through COVID or whatever else we're going to face in this world in the coming years, God forbid, I hope we don't, mm -hmm. you got to be able to keep your health up. And in order to do that, you got to be able to deal with the challenges that are going to come to you. You're, good. You're not going to have your certain support systems. In my mind, your best health comes when you're not reliant on a system to support it. Now, I'm not put this group is great, and I think we should have, the, but if we teach sustainability without the need for, you know, a system, then and again, this is my personal, but a lot where people struggle afterwards and why people relapse, give you another example with that. So, you know, you might, you know, who Penn and Teller is, the, the comedian, uh, um, uh, magician. Yeah, based out of Vegas? Uh, I think so. Oh, yeah. So Penn Gillette, the bigger guy, yeah, lost yeah, yeah. 100 pounds eating potatoes okay, yep. for like a year. And you can look it up. I don't know. I could have all my facts wrong, but not the point. The point is, I said to myself, okay, that's great. What are you going to do after? Yeah. Now think about that for a second. Now I'm not putting down any of mm -hmm. these fad diets. We all know the names yeah. of them. 
or whatever other, my question to people when they come to me about this stuff is, what are you going to do after? How are you going to sustain? Mm -hmm. It's great that you lost the weight. I mean, and yeah. again, that's my, my criticism, a lot of these things. When you're done, are you just going to go back to where you were? You're just going to go back to eating buffets and, you know, it's not, and that's what, like you said, Tony, it's, it's a journey, not a destination. You got to think to yourself, okay, I'm going to stop losing weight at this point. Mm -hmm. What am I going to do to maintain, to sustain? Yeah. You, know, you know, Tony, I could go on and on and on. No, I'm yeah. a workshop on this, but. Well, and that's always the concern with diet culture is the sustainability. Um, is right. it something? And I got to admit that was going through my mind in the very early days. Um, I mean, for me personally, it was really the, 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 the focus was getting the junk food on uh, out of my life. And I later le learned by incorporating healthy foods that made it easier. Um, you know, here at Moda, uh, I, I, uh, we have this thing called Jerf, just eat real food. And, you know, and that was uh, my mindset uh, in, in the early days. I came up with that acronym a little bit later. Uh, and I felt that was the, the most sustainable way um, uh, to keep the weight off. Um, for, forget the, 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 the dieting. Um, I, I want to delve into the hiking in, in just a, a minute since you brought it up. But in particular, I can't recall and am... Uh, and if it's not the case, let me know. I don't know if it was in the podcast or in the notes, but you used the term, and I'm always hesitant to, to go there in a group uh, setting, um, but I don't think it does anybody any benefit to, to sugarcoat the journey. But I, I believe the, the wording you use is, I never really beat obesity. Um, so first of all, correct me, if is that a term that you... Um, yeah, and it's, it, well, you know what, I should even, I should clarify, because the, there was... Early on, I, I, I had put out something along the lines of, you know, I had beat it, you know, beat that obesity demon. Mm -hmm. But really, it comes down to, I'll be blunt, an eating disorder, binge mm -hmm. eating. Okay. Huh. Okay, I rode on a high for a little while, being perfect, being perfect for, mm -hmm. for and guess what? You know, the one thing about habits and, and, and addictions is that... Mm -hmm you know, you, you, whether you're, uh, you have an alcohol struggle or drugs or smoking or things that doesn't really truly just go away, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm not telling you this because it's bad news. I yeah. just had to learn habits to yeah. kind of deal with it. Now, if somebody could sit here and tell me, oh yeah, I literally beat my eating disorder. And there's a mm -hmm. lot of programs out there that, that help people with eating disorders. And I think they're great. Uh, but on the other hand, <laughs> Hey, I, even just last night, I find myself struggling weekends. And I know we're all on the same page, which is why I do the 80, 20 kind of rule uh, with eating um, 80, 80% 80 trying to clean eating. Um, I know I have those moments when I just want to eat a row of cookies. <laughs> is that good for me? No. Does it make me feel good? You know, at the moment? Yeah, I like do. I like having that. And so did I beat it? Well, I just, um, I, I like to, I think it's the understanding that it's something that's uh, always going to be there. Uh, right. I, I personally look at it, okay, I've, I've, I've got it very quiet, um, but I got to admit, I think there was one point in my life where I, I thought I had figured it out, beat it. Um, and quite frankly, um, it, it, it hit me in the gut. Um, I mean, it was like being punched, like, shit, no, you, you don't have this beat. Don't get too cocky. Now, where, where I think it's important is, you know, going in with that mindset that I don't have it beat, uh, is just an understanding of not yeah. getting overly cocky. Right. I mean, and accepting uh, it. I mean, hmm. because the other thing, Tony, I, I don't mean to interrupt, but I think that's a great point. If you know that, then you're not less likely to put yourself into situations that are going to trigger that. Now, give exactly. you an example. Today, I got invited to go somewhere. I'm sorry, Terry, <laughs> to go to a buffet. Now, I, everybody on this, uh, you know, call, I'm sure we know that uh, you know, <laughs> buffet mm -hmm. and you're, what am I going to do? Do I, do I not go out with my family because they're eating at a buffet and I have an eating disorder or do I come in with a game plan and say, all right. And I have to do this sometimes. Sometimes I say, well, go nuts and don't worry about it mm -hmm. or which deal with the consequences. Or I, sometimes I say, well, I'll go there and I'll reasonably say, well, you know, I'll probably just have a little of this and a little of this and a little of this. Mm -hmm. And, you yeah. know, but I know me because you put all that beautiful food in there and it's like, oh, you know, I'm just yeah. going <laughs> to 
<laughs> mechanical arm. What's cake in my mouth? I always say. Uh, yeah, I, get the, I never thought of it as a mechanical arm. And it's I think my arm. <laughs> yeah. Um, and one of our pillars is boundaries. And um, your boundaries may be slightly different than mine or or different. Oh, yeah. Um, and uh, and it's actually going to be a future uh, uh, workshop uh, here. Um, and again, I, um, you know, the and we we actually talked about it uh, a couple of weeks ago, the abstinence versus moderation route. Uh, I don't like to shove one message down any, anybody's throat. Yeah. I, I think we all got to find uh, where on that spectrum we are. Yes. And and uh, it, but it's key that we're, we're honest. I, again, just on the beating obesity, um, I, I, you know, I, I, I think it's important uh, and part of the sustainability is just an, a general understanding uh, that this is. And uh, I'll, I'll just wrap up. Uh, uh, we use comedy a fair amount here in our workshops, and there's a, a clip uh, from Craig Ferguson. Uh, it was, it's actually his most uh, viewed monologue. Now he's talking about alcoholism. And listen, right. if we're honest in our journey, there's a lot of parallels that we can we can take from 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 the oh. alcoholism world and ours. And his one liner, as it comes to alcoholism, my understanding he's 20 years sober now, is it's a life of vigilance. Right, but you know the, the challenging, and I think everybody on this call knows this. You can, if you have alcoholic friends and you don't, you can cut out the, you don't have to have alcohol in your house. Okay. But I'm living with somebody in my house who brings in cookies all the time and ice cream and has to hide them. Of course, you can't hide the ice cream because, you know, I can get. And so I'm living around my addictions all the time. And, you know, and so it's a little different than the drugs or the, you know, like a, if, I, if I was married to a drug user and I have a drug problem. You know, I could get divorced, which you know, maybe I don't want to. So I think there are nuances, Tony, mm -hmm. and, and this is just my opinion, and I didn't mean to steamroll over it, but it's also important for folks here who are struggling by themselves and their partner is not on board. Now, my wife has slowly gotten on board with the health stuff with me, but we still have cookies. Mm -hmm. I love cookies, <laughs> Never, but my health is somewhere between broccoli and cookies. Mm -hmm. So, you know. In the, uh, yeah, in the topic of... Um you know, uh, sharing the space and, and those around us comes up uh, a fair amount. And that that in itself is uh, an entire workshop. Um, okay, so I want to get to Q&A around uh, in, a, in a few minutes. So we'll talk okay. about the seventh point. Now, the seventh point, uh, I, I think you've addressed it too. Like, how does a guy that loses 200 pounds in 11 months make small changes that they, they, that they had to be big? Sure. But yeah. so officially, your seventh point is small changes lead to big results. Uh, you want to delve into that a bit? Yeah, and you know, there are obviously going to be a lot of questions, and, and, and I, I, I won't have a lot of answers quite yet on, well, was it a good idea to do that? I, first off, had no idea that was going to happen, okay? All I did was step off on the journey and um, start, and then I just got so much momentum, I, I just pushed and pushed and pushed myself. Let's not even get into that. Let's talk about the small changes. Mm -hmm. You could look at and say, I have 200 pounds to lose, and say, oh my God, how am I ever going to climb this mountain? How, how am I going to do this? Or you could say to yourself, I have one pound to lose 200 times. Can you lose one pound? Sure. All right. So I lose one pound. Great. Do it again. Okay. Do it again. Now, let's face it, we all know with weight loss, and I might, we, you and I can have another workshop on weight loss, Tony. Um, with weight loss, it's not a perfect journey, okay? Um, and that's why I, I focus more on telling people to so, so focus on habits. But if you break it down like that, and you don't have to use one pound, but you get the mindset I'm trying to say, is that if you're going to look at the big mountain of 200 pounds, you're going to get... You just, because who can look at that and say to themselves, well, I, if anybody, if anybody says, oh yeah, I can just, we wouldn't even be yeah. doing what we do. Mm -hmm. But if we take that and just say to yourself, okay, let's just focus on, because let, let's face it, for a lot of us, you didn't gain it in a year or, you know, or mm -hmm. two years or five, you know, you gained it over a lifetime. And so I also had something I called unfatting, which is a terrible term, but I kind of looked at myself trying to reverse all the what I had done. Mm -hmm. And in order to do it, I kind of had to think about it in stages. Um, when I first started on the journey, Tony, how are we doing on time? I don't want to go. It's okay. Far. Yeah, you were, we're doing. Yeah. Really when good. I first started on it, all I did was track my food. Mm -hmm. I used my fitness pal and I just literally entered everything 
into there just so I understood what I was eating. And this is a whole other thing we could talk about too in more detail. But the point was, it helped me just kind of understand. And then it, it helped me also kind of, you know, scale back little by little. Mm -hmm. But like I said, when I started seeing results after that, that first hundred pounds, like the first few months, I hardly saw anything. I looked basically the same, mm -hmm. but after about like five, six months, mm -hmm. I started to gain momentum and then I just started cranking it up. Yeah. I just started exercising like a fiend and which you can't out exercise a bad diet, but, no. and then just pushing myself to change, change, change. Is that for everybody? No, I'm not recommending that. In fact, I tell people, you got to find your own sort of journey. Mm -hmm. Is it possible? Yeah, I'm sitting here. And so you might criticize and say, well, was that healthy? Well, was it healthy having sleep apnea, mm -hmm. diabetes, high blood pressure? And I have none of those today. Mm -hmm. You tell me. Yep. And on the time, I mean, that's the thing. Um, you know, let, let's be honest. I mean, 200 pounds in 11 months, it, it is a rarity. Uh, it clearly has right. happened. And in my time delving into more of the, the, the data, uh, it has happened. Uh, when when right. we did the documentary, there was one fellow, I think he lost 70 pounds. Uh, keep in mind, he was a shorter guy, but it's a seven pounds, 70, seven zero. And if I'm, it was either four or six months, something crazy. And I second guessed and second guessed it. And it, it happens. Yeah. Um, the one thing I, I just say, and I, uh, I've got a couple of things lined up here, just maybe to help put in perspective. I mean, obese Mike, um, I mean, can you summarize your diet in a couple of minutes? I mean, you know, yeah, just to let's maybe because I think this helps put in perspective. You're talking what I eat now or what I eat no, back, no, 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 back then. Let's say I think this helped put the 200 pounds. You know what's so weird now? Mm -hmm. I, I can't even remember a lot. I ate yeah. anything I wanted, and mm -hmm. I, I make a joke. Please don't be offended folks but i'm not particularly picky and i always joke with people now i know people who are who are bigger and you know eat anything up, but i always joke i wasn't particular picky yeah. you know to, to get up to 400 pounds you know what i mean it's like i just i mean and i had some weird habits too and you know having an eating disorder you wake up in the middle of the night and i'm eating cheese with barbecue sauce on it and i'm eating <laughs> you know just whatever i want i just didn't care you know, yeah. whatever made me feel good and gave me that dopamine mm -hmm. rush and all that, that I ate, you know, a lot of carby stuff, breads and, you know, soda, whatever I wanted I, in a summary, Tony, I, I didn't really have any yeah. limits. I mean, I do some things I don't like, but mm -hmm. uh, I think that's a, a good term. And um, I saw a few uh, um, um, uh, smirks and smiles, me included. Uh, yeah. I can recall uh, whipping up a batch. Oh, of the weird the, stuff. Yeah. The, I got, on the I ribble got... in the night. Um, yeah. So I'll tell you what, I'm going to go through the, the chat box um, and then um, what we can do some Q and a, and then uh, officially I'm going to wrap up at, at 10 30. If, if Mike's able to hang in and then, you know, maybe we can do some, um, straight from the floor but let me just uh, more on a rapid fire fashion a few of them you touched on and yep. um, but um so yeah, going straight to the chat box in order so did you lose any friends when you transitioned from 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 big mike to, to new mike did is your circle friends exactly the same were there some changes yeah i've got a couple we could that's a deep that's a deep one so yes mm -hmm. um i lost family members mm -hmm. so um i'm divorced remarried my beautiful wife terry for nearly you know 19 years now then together and, um, but my family from the divorce side, my children, um, I don't want to get into all the details, yeah, understood. but it's cause it's painful still to me, mm -hmm. but it, my, I think my transformation, yeah. um, caused uh, uneasy feelings yeah. for folks to deal with because I'm also more confident now. And I think people like you, I have one, I'll give it another story. I had a guy and I used to ride the bus with to work. And um, he was a, a, a little thinner and better shape than me before. Mm -hmm. And I remember he, when he started seeing me, he said to me, and I kid you not, I liked you better before. Mm -hmm. And I looked at him and like, dude, seriously? Yeah. I said, you know, I was suicide. I, I tried to kill myself. I hated my life. I was on the brink of dying. And you liked me freaking better before. Yeah. I, I mean, I almost, and he apologized to me. He was like, no, oh, dude, I didn't know that, you know, I'm like, man, you got to think about what you're saying. Yeah. I said, you know, okay, I'm not, not fully the same guy I was before, yeah. but that guy wasn't serving Mike. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, I'm getting a little angry. <laughs> no, no, I, 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 no, I can hear the, the hair. I can hear the passion and I am hearing other, um, 
uh, parallels. Um, uh, so yeah, let's get these questions. Yeah. That's why I'm here, guys. Yeah, I, I, absolutely. But thanks for sharing that. Yeah. I know it's not easy. Uh, how did you deal with uh, any setbacks? Did you have any setbacks uh, in your? Oh, in your geez, journey? it was perfect. What do they say that the 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 the, the path well, to success, success. is a straight oh, yeah. line? Everybody yeah, I just I just lost 200 pounds in my life. A lot of setbacks. Lots of setbacks. I, I still have setbacks. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know. And uh, what do I do? I just keep that mindset going. I keep these principles. I live these principles. And that's what keeps me going because let's face it, accept that you're gonna screw up sometimes because you're human. We love food. We love, you know, we sometimes feel lazy. That's okay, but get back up. Yep, and, and do uh, it. Yep. Uh, well said. And that's why we have pillar number six, accepting setbacks. I, I can't see anybody. Every, a lot of people think the journey is this is very straight downward yeah, line. A lot of and, and it is, but you're right. There's the, I know it's all over the internet, the, that, that business thing. This is what people think success is like, and it's oh, got crap. all the twirly lines and it's the same thing here. Uh, another excellent question coming from the floor. Uh, at what point in your journey did this path become all consuming? At what point in this journey did this become, uh, sorry, I need to slow down. At what point in your journey did did this path become all consuming? Yeah, that's an interesting question. Um, <laughs> a lot of these we could talk about. I don't remember what point it was. I think at the mm -hmm. point that I realized that the path was making me feel better, mm -hmm. I kept going more. Now, there was, remember I talked about the pendulum. So now there's, this is another star article I wrote too, where I talked about going from unhealthy suicidal Mike to health nut Mike. Mm -hmm. Because and then it's like this pendulum kind of swung. And so I went over here to where I wasn't going to family functions like today, you know, I wouldn't have gone to the buffet and I would mm -hmm. cut out certain things because, you know, or I'm sorry, I can't meet up with you because I got to go out and walk because I came obsessed because I was so scared that I was going to go back to this mic. And so I did everything to stay up here. But you know what? I couldn't sustain mm -hmm. that long and it was burning me out. Yeah. And so I had to kind of find where this was for me okay. now some of my friends are still up here mm -hmm. god bless them you yeah. know and that's great i kind of need a little more in here to be healthy and happy and actually yeah, we, yeah and um uh, mm -hmm. not that the, this question but the one after that was in that a little bit but there was an uh, um uh, a second part. answer <laughs> yeah, yeah there was a second part to that um and i'm just going to paraphrase a little bit the uh, it's about the honeymoon phase. So did you feel uh, we'd use that term around here a fair yeah. amount it, it went when somebody just loses the weight and there's that honeymoon phase oh, yeah. um, did, did, did that existed for you or yeah I mean you imagine and especially how rapid it was dude here I am I I couldn't even we all know the story I was wearing four and five X shirts I couldn't even buy my clothes at a regular store I was going to JC Penny mm -hmm. and I was exceeding JC Penny anymore and I was like now I can go in a store and buy anything I want. Yeah. You know, I can, and I'm like, Hey, this is pretty cool. And you ride that high for a little while. Yeah. Okay. And it feels good. But then I think about the point that you start to realize that everything isn't perfect and that you're still going to deal with your demons mm -hmm. at times, you know, it really comes down to, I wanted to ask you guys, I mean, you know, how is everybody feeling today? Because, you know, it really comes down to is, are you taking care of your emotions and are you taking care of yourself? And that was sort of the next phase that I had to figure out is like, okay, the health stuff is good, but what's going on in here? Am I feeling good? Mm -hmm. And that honeymoon phase started to dwell. And yeah. then you start going back to them habits. It's yep. like, well, I'm feeling bad. So I'm just going to, you know. Yeah. Um, and, and it um, in our workshop where we talk about, we call it living in the day after maintenance. It's, it, it's about um, understanding that every honeymoon comes to a, uh, right. to an end and uh, <clears throat> contrary to what everybody tells me but we, we won't go that's a, that's that that's a that's a different talk uh another point in here and I, i'm going to paraphrase if i could uh so as you're maintaining sustaining uh has there been some fluctuation in and weight and how do you deal with it if so yes and i don't i well first off at some point i stopped weighing myself anymore okay. mm -hmm. so i don't even know what i weigh did i gain weight over covid i sure did and you know what? I don't have any regrets, mm -hmm. especially over winter. Um, I hike all winter. And uh, now I kind of just let's face it. And I'm sure it's the same up in Canada. You know, mm -hmm. that that fall period into getting up to Christmas time, people like to start eating all the, the goodies mm -hmm. that come around. I don't want to miss out on that stuff. And so I allow myself a little bit. I, what do I do? I just get back on track. I don't worry about it. Um, 
I know, I, I know what my limits are. And I just kind of like, all right, buddy, you need to slow down. Like I have had it happen recently, you know, and you know, the doctor was telling me, you know, that he's, Oh, it looks like your cholesterol went up. Got to put you on cholesterol medication. I say, like, no, I've been eating like crap. I'm going to, I'm going to mm. stop because I'm not getting on medication again. And, um, you know, so I don't worry about it anymore. I, where I used to be deathly afraid of it. Mm -hmm. I just, you gotta, and that's for, you know, you gotta find, you know, where now do I recommend fluctuating? No, mm -hmm. but you know what? I, I gotta do what works for me. Yeah. You know? I, um, so I just, um, on, on that point though, how do you avoid the, what the hell effect and, and did, did you ever find yourself? So in this swaying, yeah. um, have you found okay so you're you're a few years almost five or six years into sustaining you is the swaying shrinking or yeah i mean it is but i think the, here's what the challenge is tony and we didn't get into a lot of detail and we don't have a lot of time to talk about mm -hmm. this it really comes down to my my self-care habits and taking care of my mental health and so that for me, it's all tied into that. And I'm going to tell you, no offense to people, but in my mind, most people who struggle, especially at the extreme, are dealing with emotional issues yeah. that they're feeding. It's not what you're eating. It's what's eating you. I love that line, yeah. And I, I just feel like, you know, for me, I got to, it's when I'm, I, that's what I really, you know, instead of, put, instead of like going back on another freaking diet to lose mm -hmm. weight, what's going on, Mike? You know, are you going through stress? I, that's the other part of what happened last year. I won't get into details. I had a very severe financial issue happen last mm -hmm. year and it stressed me out. And I was at the breaking point. I was like, the only thing that really, I, so I ate. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, you know, and I, I kept exercising. I kept eating clean during the week. But, you know, it's about just keeping that mindset. It's never, I don't think it's ever going to be perfect. If anybody lives it perfect, then yeah. God bless them, like I say, you know. Yeah, um, in the earlier days in, in the pandemic, and we still uh, go there every once in a while, but uh, uh, it was probably more apparent in the earlier days is um, how stress and in particular, you know, cortisol, that hormone, it can it can just uh, rev up that 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 beast that lives in us. Um, uh, I don't know if you ever had a, um, a, a euphemism for the term. Actually, I just finished reading the book, The Elephant in the Room, uh, which you inspired me to finally get off. And well, actually, good. even Tommy Tomlinson um, had a, a euphemism. I think euphemism is the word. Um, you know, sometimes we use the word uh, slick or, or the beast in us. And he, he had he called it the hog, the hog that lived in him. Um, wasn't, did, did you uh, ever have a euphemism for, for that beast inside of us or look at it that way? I guess I didn't really, because, you know, I just, the beast inside of me was, is more about my growing up in a family that didn't really have good self-care when it came to stress. Mm -hmm. I, you know, we're not going to be able to always deal. We're not going to be able to control the things that go on around us, pandemic, right. Or anything else like my financial thing that happened last year, stress at work, whatever. But it's how you deal with those things. And I, that's really what it comes. When I start slipping, it's usually just because, you know, I'm not employing my self-care routine. You know, I, I pray, I read scripture, I meditate, and I exercise. That to me, like even my hiking, my hiking is not about, hike with Mike is not about hiking. It's about mm -hmm. mental health. Mm -hmm. It's about making me feel good so that I can deal with the crap in this world without eating it. Well, I um I wanted to talk about hiking, and I've been on the fence whether or not I want to bring it up, but I think it serves a much bigger purpose, yeah. Uh, than we realize. And actually, I'm going to refer back to uh, Tom Lee Tomlinson. Um, I, I I've I've seen this message over and over and again. It was one of the fundamental takeaways for me when I when I did the documentary. I love he's got it's a one liner how he sums it up though. Um, overcoming any addiction means something else has to fill that space. One more time, yeah. overcoming any addiction means something else has to fill that space that was a core message for me actually probably six years into the journey when i realized that but as i've been following you and i you know i don't want to put words in your book but uh on the hiking um that seems to be you know what you've that that's your mental kind of uh, so did you know doctors in scotland actually prescribe hiking for mental health and they you know they 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 you know mm -hmm. There's all that's that's yeah. another subject we could keep talking about, you know, why I promote hiking, yeah. because it's just such a fantastic. I mean, when you're 
we're, we're surrounded by these things all the time and, uh, you know, all mm-hmm. it, and it's like just constant. But when you break away from that stuff and, mm-hmm. and just focus, you know, if you're spiritual, maybe you talk to, to your higher power or whatever, when you're mm-hmm. out there, but it gets away all that noise. You know, yes, last night, Terry and I went hiking and, um, you know, we were just like, went by a waterfall and it's just, oh, the sound of that. It's just mm-hmm. so, mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know what pill you can take to make you feel like that, but there really isn't. Well, they and try. I, you know they, what? You're better off not. They 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 uh, try to sell one. They're going to continue to sell one. Um, actually, yeah. So you referred to the um, the data, uh, uh, whether it's out of Scotland or what have you. But yes, I, I uh, delved into that. Actually, it's uh, the guy's name is uh, John. Uh, I might be mispronouncing. Um, John, John Ratty, would it be? Ratty, yeah. Ratty, yeah. yeah. Um, Spark, the revolu- revolutionary new science behind exercise in the brain. And he, that you just summed up uh, about the four or five chapters there you go. Um, <laughs> in, in his book. Now, it might not be hiking for everyone. It could be cycling. It could be just sure. long walks. Um, something's got to crowd out the noise is where I was going with that. Uh, I think there's a couple in the chat box. Um, yeah. Uh, I, there, there's one I know that I it, I, I, um, I think is on everyone's mind. Um, um, but can you give us any kind of an executive summary? And this is what people want to know, obviously. Um, you know, what does a typical day look like from a meal perspective for, for, for Mike? What I'll do is we'll, we'll, we'll have you tackle this uh, question. I'm going to formally uh, close as we always do because we have a 20-second tradition. And then um, hang around for how, wh- however long you got. And then we can just kind of sure. open the floor. So yeah. formally answer this question. And then uh, we'll, we'll semi-close it up. Yeah, it's funny. They ask me that when I do Fox 61 interviews. Every year I do the same thing. Um, but it kind of varies for me. High level, I eat mostly plant-based and whole foods. Mm-hmm. Uh, I try to, um, and I try to keep it simple. Um, I'm a, I'm a big beans, nuts, um, grains. Sardines? You, you a fan of sardines? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I like we, those. Yeah. All right, we got a little running yeah. joke here. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Is that a, I, not in on that one. So yeah, yeah sorry. You're, you're right. You're, um, but you know, it really comes down to, I mean, it's, it's close as trying to keep now, am I, am I sometimes, you know, eating things that I, I shouldn't like, you know, I, I shouldn't even say shouldn't that that's a terrible thing to say. Maybe am I sometimes eating things that are not, but during, so for me during the week, like Monday through Friday, I eat, I, I don't want to call myself anything. I'm not a, I'm not a vegan. I'm not a anything. I'm not a flex. I would, if you were to label me, flexitarian seems to mm-hmm. be the, the term that yep. I, so I, I eat a lot less meat than I used to. Um, although I do like meat, I like fish, I like chicken, um, beef, I eat a lot less, mm-hmm. um, pork, a lot less, almost, you know, just very little of that stuff. But during the week, um, in the morning, it depends how I feel. Uh, sometimes my wife and I make smoothies, uh, vegetable, mostly with some, with, uh, you know, uh, uh, some fruit in it. Uh, or, um, I like eggs, you know, but now that's obviously not vegan, but if you were to, if you were to take out like most of it, it, my diet, diet, my intake, Mm -hmm. my food intake is mostly vegan type. So I might eat for lunch. I love split pea soup or lentils or beans and vegetable. I like a lot of that stuff because it fills you, you know, oh boy, I'm going to hold that diet tangent here, but you know, I was talking to my dentist who was telling me all this, she ate all this junk food and kept getting hungry and eating and eating and eating. And I said, that's because there's nothing in what you're eating. Yeah. <laughs> so I try to eat things that fill me, make me, because, you know, you and I talked about this. I, I like, I like a full stomach. I like the feeling of feeling full. I don't like feeling hungry. I don't like that. Mm-hmm. Yes. I don't know why. I mean, it is good for you to feel hungry. I know, and I'm working on it, but you know, so I eat things that I know are going to make me feel good you know, nutritionally, um, kale and all, you know, all that mm-hmm. stuff that they, they, t- so, um, and then dinner, I'm a little more flexible. We try to eat healthy. You know, my wife might make some, uh, fish or chicken, or sometimes we just eat hummus and, uh, some, uh, whole grain crisps. And, um, sometimes we eat just, uh, grapes and, and, uh, peanuts or something, you know, <laughs> we just, 
Yeah, so as it does sound again, I try to stay away from the labels. And flexitarian means uh, mostly plants with, with a little bit yeah. of animal protein. Uh, here, here we call it jerf. And in terms of the abstinence versus moderation, as we mentioned earlier, it really is a, a, a choice that one's got to be honest. So I'm going to formally close as we always do. We have a tradition and uh, we got to stay with our traditions. If you're able to hang in a little after, for as long as you, you, you can, uh, I'll invite members and non-members, anybody here for the first time to stay with us. Uh, uh, if there's anything, I'll, I'll look at the chat box in a moment, see if there's anything I didn't get to. Or if you want to throw something directly at Mike, uh, we will. So for me to do this, um, I'm going to give everybody the option to, to unmute yourself because we're going to do the mantra. So again, I highly encourage you just stay with us uh, for 30 more seconds here. You're not going to want to miss this. Uh, it's, it's this. Okay. All right. So we wrap things up. Uh, function F5. There we go. No, uh, that's, did I, oh, all right. Let me line up the slides a little better. All right. Where, oh, there it is. All right. I got it. I got it. I got it. All right. No. Oh yes. That's function of five. Okay. Hold on. I'll get it. Uh, oh. Okay, uh, I'm hopeful you can. All right, here we go. 20 seconds of audio followed by the mantra. I invite you to my mantra. My mantra. mantra. I care, I care about, about my health, health and my, my wellness. wellness. I eat, I eat I real food, food and control I am a priority. Okay, so I'll wish everyone a mode a week. Uh, a big thank you for Michael um, for joining us. I will have the recording for this, and everyone's going to get a follow up uh, email. We'll post it. Uh, if you're able to hang in, uh, please do. And I, I probably should have asked you uh, sooner, Michael. Uh, but again, formally just want to close things up and, and thank you um, uh, for that. Awesome. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. I hope it was helpful, but happy to stick around. Yep. Yeah. If you could for, and um, you let me know time-wise, um, uh, but if you got to go, you got to go. Cause we did uh, say 10 30 and we went into, Oh boy, already some overtime. Um, but I don't know. I think there's one question. There's a couple I might not. Have yeah. Done. It seemed like there was a question saying that they didn't feel that I answered uh, the, the, the diet. And, it, you know, I, I would comment on that because I don't really have, I don't, I try not to set limits. I mean, what, mm -hmm. what, one of the things um, that, that got challenging for being so controlling over what I ate is the more I controlled it, the more it became a focus and an